Kampala Edge Times. Did it spill? We got it. Welcome aboard to Kampala Edge Times with me, John Kenny, right here. I'm very glad to have you uh, watch our show, Kampala Edge Talks, once again. And today with me, I have some amazing gentlemen. First of all, I want to congratulate all students. Today is International Students Day worldwide. I, I, I want to say congratulations to the people who have been graduating and also all students who are uh, going through the struggle, who are studying, making ends meet, uh, trying to make their parents proud. I mean it. You people are, are, are the heroes of tomorrow. Uh, let's go straight away to introducing ourselves. Um, first, with gentleman on the left, introduce yourself, sir. Yes, my name is Brian Okori. I'm the National Treasurer of the International Students Association and as well the, the, the Secretary of Finance and Administration of the East Africa Students Union. Thank you. And uh, the gentleman next left. My name is Joshua Mafavi. I am the Executive Secretary of the East African Students Union. Thank nice you. meeting you, sir. Uh, on my right, I have other two gentlemen. Introduce yourself, sir. Yeah. Good, mo good morning, viewers. Hello. I'm called Odu Felix, the political vibrator. I'm Secretary for International Affairs, UNSA, Uganda National Students Association, and at the same time, the Deputy Secretary General, IASU, the U East African Students Union. Thank you, sir. Welcome to this show, sir. Uh, introduce yourself, sir. Yes, I'm called Owen Robert, the district UNSA speaker. Welcome. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. Now, as usual, uh, at Kampala Edge Times, we positivity, we focus on spreading knowledge. We focus on um, how to improve society. And today, our topic is, uh, is based on the recent happenings. We saw bomb blasts in Kampala, and that uh, left us with very disturbing images. But also, we are also focusing on the students. So today, our topic is uh, in insecurity in Uganda and the, uh, the, the Students Association in Uganda. What is the fate of students in such a political hemisphere? First of all, I want to uh, find out from uh, Mr. Okori Bryan. Uh, what is your comment on this political situation, this trauma that people are going through? I think it is not political, uh, like you are like you're stating it. It's basically a security matter. And one will pass out to send our heartfelt request to those who have lost their loved ones with the bombing that happened yesterday. And to the, and to the nationals, we want to caution you and ask you that please be vigilant. The bombings are now around and... Uh, most importantly, keep safe, be vigilant of everybody who is coming close to you. Uh, so nice to ask that question because now that uh, we're in Uganda, we are known for being one of the most secure nations in the, in the world, that all of us ask ourselves, what's the problem? How are these people coming in? Who are they? And those questions, you can't answer them now. Uh, the president had, uh, had the press release over, over the same matter yesterday. I, I had the document I read, and the president was talking about the pigs, and so those people who are trying to come in and bomb. We still don't have a clear investigation on who is doing that. It's not for me to comment on, uh, it's not, I'm, I'm not a security expert, but on an overview, I would just say that uh, it is here now and we have to be very vigilant and see how closely we can counterfight it. Still, it is an insecurity matter and for us on the security and on the students' part, we, we are worried because we, are the, we can be the next target. Chamber will invest over 40,000 students and students are piled over everywhere. So, ours is mine particularly is first to caution the, our constituency of the students to be safe and again to, to ask government to beef up and we have uh, a stable nation because now we are staggering a little. Well, thank you so much for uh, that, that comment. I mean, this has been very disturbing. I saw images of the lady who, whose face had been dis, distorted completely. And I, I can't imagine how she's going to live. I, I, I personally also send sincere like, sympathies to these families and the people who have experienced this terrible incident. Uh, Mr. Uh, I would like to find out from you, uh, what are the plans of uh, the, uh, the Uganda Students Association, Uganda National Students Association, uh, for the students on, on, on how they are going to protect themselves from such, such situations that are very unfortunate. Thank you very much, Modreta. I think um, mine would be a little bit different. I'll speak from uh, a greater end of the, the region. We are all experiencing the insecurity. Schools in Sudan are open. Schools in, 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 in Burundi are open. Schools in Rwanda are open. They are operating well. We might not need to have a solid plan to have our schools open in Uganda as well, because it's part of our constituency of the East African Students' Union. Now, I am saying we can never plan for this disaster. It happened yesterday at Parliament, almost Parliament, where security is highest, and it happened. So much as we can do plans, much as we can do anything, it calls for vigilance from the students' end. Like yet, the other day you saw the, the, the principal of Makere University Business School has said no student is entering here with bugs, effective the very yesterday. So we are saying our vigilance to 
we, we need to report anybody whom we suspect a stranger, anybody whom we think is not part of us, maybe somebody looks like they can do something wrong. So basically, from us, we we'll rotate around vigilance. But I am saying, given that other institutions in other countries are open, they are doing well, these problems are not there, let us also open up institutions in Uganda and confine our children. Some of these children are got by accident. Somebody just walking on the street and then they fall victimized. It's because they are not in the right place. They are not in schools. They are not here and there. So let's have the schools open. Let's have students confined in schools. Nobody, no stranger enters into the schools. No, nobody suspected. Everybody should have been checked thoroughly to enter into the schools. So we, we can work with it that way. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. But uh, maybe if I may chip in. Yes. Do you, do you expect schools to really open by January next year? Um, from, from my own point of view, schools will open. It might be January, it might not be January. We are dealing on here says there is no clear roadmap, there is no clear indication, there is no document to that effect. Somebody just went on TV and said schools will open in January when you hit a target of a certain number or, uh, which has been vaccinated. And yet, by now, we've not hit that target. This is almost, this is November, mid November. Yes. Not hit that target, schools are supposed to open a month from now. So it is food for thought. Somebody might, we might not open them, we might open them. But, just still at here, but we hope they do. Yeah, because, hopefully, hopefully. And yeah. we guide so because our students are rotting. Students, the other day I was traveling and a 15 year old is the one who is the conductor of a taxi. And I'm wondering, where is this world heading? Actually, it was, I was with a colleague. Somebody is, is a student, a kid is, is the, the, the conductor of a taxi. Girls are getting pregnant. Our children are, there is violence all over. There is, schools should open. Yeah, honestly. Let me thank you for that comment. Seriously, schools are really need to open. Um, I, I don't know, if, if you have a comment, you may drop it in the comment section because this is a serious issue. Security has become very, very vital and it's very unpredictable. So I, I have turned to my right uh, uh, to talk to the gentleman wearing a tie and a coat. He's very smart. Uh, you say uh, there's a slang you use to describe yourself. Who are the you? The political vibrator. The political vibrator, as you hear it. Uh, Mr. Political Vibrator, I would like to find out what is your comment on, on, on the, uh, the political and security situation for the students right now? Give us your view. Uh, thank you so much. Once again, uh, viewers of the Kampala Edge Times, uh, I still again greet you people. The topic we have on table today in security in the nation and then the International Students Day celebration, these are topics that are very important and imperative. Let me give in my comments on, on security. One, I would like to be on record that matters of security are very sensitive issues. Therefore, I will not go without appreciating the efforts that are being put in place by the different security experts that we have in, in the country. Definitely good work being done there by the UPDF, the police force, the Uganda prisons, and other security agencies like the ESOP. Away from that, they've, they've really kept the country peaceful. But what I want to, to tell us as a country, Right now, as Uganda, we are now having two insecurity we are dealing with. Just yesterday, from the previous speakers we've had, we had bombings around the parliament at the parliamentary avenue. I want to be also on record and quote His Excellency who released a press release. He, he said, the more these people do these attacks, yes, they expose themselves, and we have confidence in our security systems. First of all, yesterday, they were able to restore calm in the city, and we did not have any other instances that happen. The other second insecurity that we are still dealing with is the issue of COVID-19 pandemic, which has not left us. These two insecurities affect not only those who are employed, but it affects the education sector, especially as students who are in learning institutions, in secondary schools, in higher education, learning centers, in universities. And then also it affects our parents when they are not going to work. Where will they get the money to pay the tuition that is escalating each and every day in Uganda. Therefore, I also want to call upon uh, the students of Uganda, the youth and the citizens, that let's be vigilant. Security starts with you. If you suspect any unfamiliar behavior, please report, say that we are we are all secure in maybe, this country. Maybe if I may chip in, um, someone out there may be wondering, really, report? Who are we going to report to? Because uh, usually, I think when, when you go to, to, to Uganda police, it's usually uh, it usually either involves some money or they take it lightly. So I would like to find out what procedures should someone take to report? Should they go to court or police? Which one is most trustworthy? 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, these agencies are there to help us as citizens. When you suspect somebody who is not familiar, take responsibility, run to the nearest security organ. It could be uh, people of Expo guarding somewhere, inform them, or run to the nearest police force and inform them. It's up to them to, to act. Just as I said, we are not security experts, but we are giving remedies that could help us all be secure in this country. As I conclude, let me make some communication on the International Students Day, which is the major issue why this day has been commemorated the 17th of November uh, 2021. International Students Day is commemorated worldwide, and this is because of still students who were murdered. Nine students were murdered back then in 1939, just because they, they went to a rally. One student was murdered, others raised their voices against that to the government of the Nazi in Czech Republic, and the government responded by closing all learning institutions, colleges and universities. Therefore, on, on such a day, we are saying, as, as Uganda National Students Association, we expect that we should ensure that there is affordable education in Uganda. Then the second thing we are saying, we as student leaders, we have ideas that can benefit the nation on national development. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Uh, those were very powerful words right there. I think you picked a leaf or two. I, I, I personally didn't know what the students, uh, international students, they means until a few minutes ago. That was very amazing. Thank you, sir. And uh, at the extreme right, we have another gentleman right there, a very powerful man. Uh, I had him being called the speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, may I take the ability to re uh, recognize you at Kampala East Times? Please give us your comment on, uh, on the student situation in this security environment in Uganda. Thank you. First and foremost, let me call upon all the students who are outside there to be security conscious. Because there's nothing you can do when you don't have life. But when you still alive, all opportunities come and you utilize them. Now, as the previous speaker said, the vibrator, he said, we are in two types of insecurity. First, the one of bombings and then the other one which has affected us seriously the students That's right. that is the COVID-19 pandemic it has brought a blow into our foreheads it has given not only the students but even the parents who are now going to face their grown-up children in the levels they don't expect them to be but now we are calling the government as they have already given us hope that in some few months to come they have to open up that institutions. Oh, by the way, yes. uh, when you talked about hope, I remembered something. Uh, the government literally came out and said they are not going to, to support schools. <laughs> they are not going to support these head teachers. I, I, I could not believe it, but they gave it out frankly. We are not helping. Yet, we are always hearing about billions being spent on other things, getting embezzled and getting replaced. But when uh, uh, head teachers came up needing uh, support, they were denied it completely. So, do you really think the government supports education in the country? As per my understanding, if they were not supporting the education system, they wouldn't have brought out the ministry to cater for education and sports. So they are doing their best. Okay, that's also. logical. Every government has to have a ministry of education. Yes. But by the fact of, of just denying to help schools, it, it is very discouraging. It's extremely discouraging. That's why we, the student leaders, we are now here advocating for them, talking so that the government should listen and hear our voices. That the head teachers who are there, they need also to be supported. Right. They are not only doing it for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the generations to come. Wow. We the students now, we are now the generations and we are now the eyes of this country. So if we are not being supported, and if the STEM is not being supported, how will the, the leaves be there as time? To never. So now I'm calling upon the government to see all the education sectors and to bring support unto them. Because if they are not supported, we are down. And that's why you see in some areas, education is now deteriorating. That's right. Performance has gone down. So as you are now listening unto us, please, if you have a voice somewhere else that can advocate for the betterment of the students, for the betterment of the schools, please, we call upon you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that information right there. And we call upon the government. I mean, if, if any government official gets to watch this, please stand up for education because without knowledge, that's a dead nation. The nation does not make sense when uh, people lack knowledge. People need knowledge to be innovative. Uh, we, we, we already hear our president talk about middle income status. That is not achievable in an illiterate, a backward, uh, like a cake 
uh, generation. It's impossible. We need education to be invested in because that's the like the root of development. People need to be informed. People need to to be self-aware. They need to be confident about what they can do. Um, I think I'm going to get a few last words from uh, the four gentlemen around me right here. And I, I have to begin again from the great gentleman right there, Mr. Corey Bryan. Mr. Corey Bryan, uh, I want to thank you for the words you've given these people who are watching us. Um, oh, give us a few last final words for these people because they have spent uh, think Thank you so much. Uh, because it's not my first time here, I think it's my second time. I think I'm part of the top section. And uh, basically, now we want to close the national day. We're celebrating it, celebrating it internationally. Uh, from, the, from our basis of Uganda, we are saying that get your social media accounts, say hashtag International Students Day 21. That's our hashtag today. Share those hard moments you're having right now, the good moments about the education sector. Let's know what's happening to you, wherever you are, wherever you're from. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. And on, 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 on his right is another gentleman right here. Remind me your name, sir. My name is Joshua Mafari. All right. Uh, give um, us a few final words for the viewers out there who are watching us. Thank you. Schools can always open as uh, much as we are like. We may cry so much that they open soon. Let schools open, let schools open. But when they open and you're dead, it's still very useless. That's right. So most importantly, let's deal with the the pandemic, let's deal with the vices around, let's deal with the bombing, the, the insecurity. When the nation is calm, you will surely go to school. Two years, a few. You may even spend five years home and still be alive. So it's better we stay at home and be safer than opening schools and not be safer. So in simple terms, you're supporting um, the, long, the long closure. I am not supporting the long closure, yes. but if it's for a good cause, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate supporting it. I am saying, let, let's stay home if we are supposed to stay home until we've hit the vaccination margin. And then go and vaccinate. When your students above 18 walk to a facility, vaccinate so that these schools can open quickly and we have students contained so that we keep them from these uh, vices, from the pandemic, from the bombing, the insecurity mentioned. That. And also from the East African Students Union, we would like to join the rest of the world and wish you all a happy International Students Day celebration. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, call another student and wish them the same. We love you all. Thank you. Well, that was the powerful message right there. The political, <laughs> the political vibrator. We have you here. So he has final words for you people. I don't need to introduce him. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, my part in short, just a quick reminder, the major incident we had about terrorism was in 2010, and uh, really citizens came and joined their hands. At such a time, we need every sector in, in the country to join hands. We, we need to be united if we are to fight this insecurity that is around. But uh, first of all, ensure that you're safe wherever you are, and then keep others who are around you very safe. Let's trust in the security organs we have. They are doing a good job. That's my, my comment on security. And finally, on the International Students' Day celebration, this is our day. Let's celebrate it. Let's remember those who, who died because of advocating for freedom and democracy in the academic space of students. As we celebrate today, go and look at the hashtag on Twitter, on all social media pages, hashtag International Students' Day 2021. Our theme is ensuring affordable education for both students in Uganda, in East Africa, and then also in Africa. I must also be on record that uh, the academic sector, the education sector is opening up. Just in first November 2021, we saw higher institutions open. So right now we are on progress. I am quite confident that come January, we as your student leaders have confidence in us. We shall work with government to see to it that uh, the education sector is open. I conclude by saying that in East Africa, we are saying one people, one destiny. We are Africans, Africa for Africa, where we are saying an integrated Africa that is prosperous and peaceful. Uh, please have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I have to uh, conclude with the other gentleman. Uh, please, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you. The floor is yours. First of all, I will begin, or oh, I will sum up by saying that uh, I send my sympathy to those who have been affected. Those are parents. Those are people who are struggling to find good future for their students. And those students who are also affected, we feel so sorry for that. Now we say, I will end up by saying that we struggle for liberty. Let us liberate Uganda and for God and my country. You're welcome. Thank you.
um that has been uh the, the the show guys thank you for tuning in thank you for watching it means a lot when you tune into this channel and watch this because this is your number one source for news and trends and i, I mean it because we bring these kinds of people to inspire you out there if you if, if you if you have a doubt in yourself these people are here to inspire you because these are fellow youths you have to believe in yourself you can make it and and um, above all you have to value life value yourself stay safe do not go around hanging out in an irrelevant way because you will either get a bomb now we have the problem either a bomb plus or you you, you will get uh, a COVID-19 infection please stay safe protect yourself uh, from me and the entire campus H times team I have to say goodbye thank you for tuning in Kampala H Times. Did it spill? We got it.